When you look at some of the things that we still don't understand about COVID-19, you, you know, does it depend on the DNA of if, you know, if I get it badly, but Tom doesn't, if one person reacts in a different way to the, to, you know, someone else? There's very um, likely a genetic component to this. We know that there are various um, susceptibility factors, just not age, but diabetes, um, weight, uh, cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease. So there's a lot of factors at play, and uh, there's a lot we have yet to understand, certainly about protective immunity. Okay, I mean, you're doing a study on this DNA-based vaccine that, that actually protects against multiple coronavirus. Why is COVID-19 different? It's a complicated uh, virus. It's, it's the largest RNA virus that we, uh, that we know of. This virus, when it infects, has a, induces such a strong immune response that people actually who have the highest antibody titers often progress to disease, whereas those who have mild or asymptomatic infection have very low levels of, of antibodies. So it's, it's a fine balance for us to try and understand to develop a vaccine that is going to induce the right kind of antibodies or T-cell responses. Professor Heaney, we're thrilled to speak to you. I want to go to Bob Woodward's new book, Rage, on President Trump. He opens the book talking about your world with Matthew Pottinger of the National Security Council and Pottinger's great, great fear that pros like you look at every day, which is the virus moving around between animals, the virus moving around between humans. Do we now have a knowledge of this virus where we are secure that it won't mutate or advance into something new? We do know that these coronaviruses have fairly stable genomes, but once in a while errors occur, and it usually causes a great change of, of behavior. Um, fortunately, this virus isn't like influenza that's rapidly changing or shifting its, its genome content. So we've got it in our sights. The problem is it's got such a complex machinery when it gets into a cell that it hijacks the cell and the immune response. The complex machinery is absolutely critical. Explain to us the naivete that the media and the public have about how hard it is to make vaccines. It's a complicated process because you need to understand the good immune responses and, dis and dis differentiate them from those that can cause disease. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, People who progress to severe COVID disease and uh, life-threatening um, the sequelae are those that actually respond robustly. And those are the kind of responses that we need to avoid in vaccines. So when someone talks about high titers or strong T cell responses, it's the nuances that we need to differentiate. And it's very difficult to articulate that and to communicate that to the public in such a way that it's clear to them. And, and certainly for politicians to get that, especially if they're anxious, of course, to uh, promise to the population that we're going to have a, a solution. The good news is that there are an enormous number of candidates out there that are being progressed. And what we need to do is advance them as quickly as possible so that we can identify those that are going to induce the right kind of immune responses and, and give us protection across the whole population. P Professor Heaney, what do we understand about what we call the, the long haulers, right? The people that could have a mild infection of COVID-19 and then have some kind of nervous reaction system or, you know, that they need to deal with the sequels, the legacy of the virus for many, many months. I mean, did they give us a, an idea of the complications and, and actually the, 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 just the fact that this COVID-19 is so difficult to get, you know, your head around? The problem with this virus is that it is not just a respiratory infection. It, it causes, you know, infections in many different organs, the kidneys, the heart, even the brain. Some people will have cognitive problems later on. They'll have maybe uh, long-term uh, adverse effects. Certainly these clots that occur, these microclots in advanced disease, can then impact on, on multiple organs. So it's very, very important for us to realize that this is not just 
a, a simple respiratory disease, but it's one that causes a multi-organ disease. And what we see in children is going to be very different than what we see in the elderly. And in that context, we may need different vaccines for different age groups. 